Hi and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Today I want to show you a new generator that we purchased and we're going to go through the whole procedure of taking it out, uh, putting the oil in it, putting the gasoline in it, starting it up, and we're going to see if it's as quiet as they say it is. The one I'm talking about is the Honda, it's the EU2200i, uh, which is the one we purchased. Now, before, of course, you start the generator up, you're going to first need to go out and get yourself a gas can. Uh, I would recommend a smaller gas can. Don't get a five-gallon gas can like a lot, of, a lot of people do, including myself. Uh, when you try to pour a five-gallon gas can, it's a little more difficult than it is when you have the smaller one. So I purchased a, uh, a two-gallon container, and the thing that I like about this particular one is it has this type of a setup on it where of course you'll take the cap off here and before you can pour it you need to press this button down to allow the fuel to pour out so it minimizes the amount of spilling that takes place. The next thing you want to do is you want to pick up yourself some kind of a cable or something because if you're going to have it outside of your house you want to have it chained down because you don't want somebody to pick it up and take off with it. Alright, so that's something else you may think about. All right, enough talking. Let's open up this box. Let's take a look at it, and uh, let's see what it looks like. And then we're going to start it up and see how quiet it actually is. Okay, so this, of course, is the generator. So let's open it up and let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. sure that uh, you know how to operate it correctly. One thing I do want to point out too is it does say no oil. Just so you know it does say no oil right here on the top. So that's very important. All right, let's take it out and uh, let's see what it looks like. tell you is that um, this product can expose you to chemicals including soot, tar, mineral oil, uh, which are known to be carcinogens. Uh, it's just a warning for you. But this is the unit itself. All right, so uh, let's read through the owner's manual and uh, we'll put some oil in it, make sure it's oiled up, fill it up with gas, and then we're going to get it started up. Okay, so first thing we're going to do now is we're going to take this cover off on the side right here. Take this cover off. We'll place this off on the side right now. And then this is where your motor oil goes. Now, it's shipped minus the motor oil, so you do need to pick up some oil and put it in here. Uh, you would think that they would send it in the box with the generator, but they do not. So you got to pick yourself up. You'll have to read your owner's manual and it'll tell you what kind of oil you need to pick up to put in there. This particular one calls for a 10W30, regular conventional motor oil. It tells you right here, the generator is shipped without the oil in the engine. Place the generator on a level surface, loosen the screw, take the cover off, and then you're going to fill the, the, uh, the fill here with motor oil. And it calls for a 10W30 API, and that's the one we're going to use. Um, it does say it'll take a maximum of 14 ounces, and it's an absolute ma maximum, so pour it in very slowly so you don't overfill it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pour the oil into it, fill it up, and then once we fill the oil up, then we'll come back, we're going to gas it up, and then we're going to get this started. But before we do that, let's talk about this generator itself. This is the generator, and as you can tell, it, um, it actually has the plugs underneath here that you can plug your regular conventional outlets into. Uh, it has an eco, eco mode here, so you can actually set it to get the best possible uh, fuel economy. It does say 
it's a, it does say 15 amps up here, but down here it does tell you it's a 20 amp breaker. So even though it says 15 here, it is a 20 amp breaker. All right, um, and there is a reset over here too. This has a uh, an alarm if the uh, the CO is too high, the carbon monoxide, it'll actually set it off. All right, of course, there's the oil um, check alert here, uh, the overload, which means if you put too much of a strain on the alternator, and that's it. And it is Bluetooth capable, but we'll have to read the manual to see what that's all about. All right, so enough talking, let's get the oil, let's put the oil in it, let's uh, fill the oil up to where it belongs. Okay, so now we just unscrew the, uh, the reservoir right here where we put the oil in, just take it out. You want to have a rag so you can actually check it to see. I just want to point this out to you too. This is the dipstick here, and you're supposed to have the oil anywhere from the very end of the dipstick to the upper part over here. You take, you, I'll take a look in the owner's manual and you'll see it. I'm going to try to have it right here in the center so it's not overfilled and it's not underfilled. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, we know that it calls for 14 ounces of 10W30 motor oil in the API. It says it has to be um, SJ or later, which means SJ or better. And let me just show you what SJ means. Okay. This is the, uh, the oil right here. It's 1030, and as you can see here, it says API service. SN, I hope you can see that. So this one is actually better than the oil that they're recommending on here. On here it calls for SJ or later, and this one is actually better than what is recommended. And again, you can pick up any brand. I picked up Honda because that's what I wanted to use in here. So we're going to take this off. We're going to take off this seal up on top right here. You do not want this seal to fall inside where you're going to be putting the oil because it will cause engine damage. So make sure that you take the entire seal off so nothing can go inside here. Then you just tilt this back a little bit. Now we know it takes 14 ounces and this container here is 12 ounces. So we're going to put in almost all of it but we're going to pour it in slowly. Okay, and now as you can see, we, the oil is just about to the full mark right up here. I'm going to bring you in there. I'm going to show you in just a second. We're going to put a dipstick in. We're going to pull it out. And we're going to look at the stick, and it's about halfway up the stick. See, it's about halfway up the stick right now. All right, let me bring you over. I'm going to show you what it looks like in the actual fill itself. See? So it's right to the top where it's supposed to be right now. You don't want to overfill it because you're going to wind up having a mess. All right? Okay, so now that we know the motor oil is full, we're going to take our, our cap and we're going to screw it in. And we're going to make sure it's tight. There's a rubber seal on there. So you want to make sure you screw it down so it's nice and tight. And that's it. Any kind of excess oil that may have dripped around there, you want to clean it off. Okay? So now this container is empty. We're going to dispose of it properly. Next thing we're going to do now is we're going to fill it up with gas. But we are going to put our cover back on. You put these little tabs right here, in here, and we'll put it back on. Just like that. And then we'll screw this back on just like that. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to fill it up with gas, the cap off. Now you want to do this in a, in a well ventilated area. I'm just doing it here in the garage just to give you a demonstration. We're going to take this. Now remember this does only holds less than a gallon. 
take this cap off. We're going to put this in here just like this, and we're going to press this button very slowly to let the gas go in. Okay, so now after we have the, uh, the fuel full, we're going to take this and put this back on here. We're going to get this out of the picture. We're just going to wipe off any kind of fuel that may have dripped or spilled or came out. Now when you fill this up, you just want to fill it to the red little circle inside there. I'm going to screw this cap back down. Till it clicks. Okay? And now we're pretty much ready to start it up. Okay, so let's um, let's take this off of here first. That was just telling us that there was no oil in here. And now we're ready to start this unit up. Let's get this out of here as well. Okay, let's move this by the door and let's fire it up. Now before you start it, you want to make sure that you have an idea of what it feels like to pull the handle. So try it a couple times just to see what it feels like. Okay? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this to the on position, just like that. We're going to come over here. This is the choke. We're going to push it to the choke position and then we're going to turn this switch here to the on position and now it's ready to start. Alright, so let me open up the door and we're going to fire this up. I am going to turn it around this way and then we're going to start it up. So let's see how it runs. Alright, so as you can see, it did take a little, a couple of pulls to get it to start, which is perfectly normal because the fuel has got to go from the fuel tank down into the carburetor, through the carburetor, and into the engine to get it to, to start up. So that's perfectly normal. Now read your owner's manual before you do anything, and that way you make sure you have everything you know all about the unit itself before you make a mistake and you wind up causing a problem. But that's it, we're all ready, waiting for the next, the next power outage and we'll be good to go. What I do like about this one is I could pick this up, I could throw it in the trunk of my car, and I could bring it to a friend's house if needed, and uh, you know, if their power goes out and mine is, is up and running. Now a big generator, obviously, it's really good to have because it has a lot more watts than this one does. Uh, I do have another generator here, but I, can, I don't have the ability to pick it up and throw it in the trunk of my car or truck to transport it to a friend's or a family member's home. With this, I like it because I can pick it up, put it in there, and, and be on the road in two minutes. Um, I will put a link down below. Check it out. See what you think. It'll be in my Amazon store. Maybe it suits your needs. And if so, you know, you, you can find out more information about it. I bought it because it is extremely quiet as compared to my other um, my other generator. The other one is extremely noisy. This one is nice and quiet. All right, so now to break it in properly, I'm going to open the door up, bring it outside, start it up. We're going to let it run for a little bit till it heats up thoroughly and everything circulates, and then we're ready for the next power outage. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.